Hey everyone, this is a look at the Lego Batman movie series 2 collectible minifigures that you can get in the individually packed blind bags. I'm going to go through the full series of 20 here. Now each one does come with an exclusive to this series so far, printed base piece, minifig base piece with the Batman logo on it. And I'm going to go through this lot uh, one by one in the order that they're shown on the collector sheet included with each one. First one on the list is Harley Quinn in end credits garb, also known as friends and family Harley Quinn, with her very high fashion gold and silver roller skates there, and a lot of little shimmery bits all over the torso and over the arms as well. She also gets some pretty shimmery print around the back of the torso there, and she gets two faces. So there's the alternate one very good one to have for this character just in general and there's a better look at the the standard face with nothing obscured all right well let's move to the next it's another end credits character alfred in friends and family garb again lots of bright metallic silver and also some gold print on the front i think the tie is just a little bit low in detail could have used maybe an outline or something the <laughs> The, the straight tie, but then he's got the, the bow tie above that as well. Same arms as Harley Quinn had. Also has the printed bass guitar there, electric guitar. And look at the look at the shine around the, the coattails. If only that matched from the torso down to that that exclusive little uh, little cloth piece. There's so much iridescence, so many colors show up. It's really cool to look at it up close like this. It doesn't look quite as cool from a distance, but it does have a little bit of a kind of a, a diamond shine effect to it. Yeah, I, I like that. I, I would like to see more of that, more of that done by Lego, just generally speaking. Now there's no alternate face for this character because it would have shown up on the back of it. So that's just it for this one. Clock King is one of many haha -ha DC villains resurrected in the Lego Batman movie. And wow, they really put a lot into making the official figure for this one with a lot of print on the torso, on the legs. The print goes all the way around to the sides of the legs. These are not supposed to represent spears, of course. They're supposed to represent the hands of a clock. It's too bad you don't have two different lengths there. But yeah, print around the sides of the legs and also on both arms. And you know, those are two different pieces. You had to print for that. And then the, uh, the face is not very thick. Makes sense, the, the piece that they chose there. And they've just kind of turned it around backwards and shown you a little bit of the, the interior of the, the workings of the clock mechanism in the spots where they were originally designed to be eyes. No print on the back of the torso here, but I'm not mad about that at all because most of the time you're just going to leave the cape on and this gives you just a little bit more clear look at the side prints. The cape is the old style of more crinkly cloth piece. Well, this is strange. I mean, literally, this is strange. Professor Hugo Strange. Looks a lot like, in many ways, the... Was it the mad scientist or the crazy scientist? I think it was the mad scientist. Uh, minifigure from the collectible minifigure series of, of days past but it's not the same does not share any of the the same prints for the torso the hip or the legs there does come with both of those Erlenmeyer flasks there in existing colors the legs are dual molded unfortunately there's no print on the back of this torso I feel like this could have used something back there just to make it a little bit more interesting just looks very plain to me and you know uh, for accessories other than the flask he does have the light gray colored uh, miner's beard type of piece there's nothing else to be seen behind that really though on the face here's merman batman mer batman bat merman how, how how do you want to, how do you want to do that this is batman thinking that he can out aquaman aquaman because he's batman what can't he do? Hmm. Probably the only time we'll ever get that mermaid bottom half piece in black. And uh, I also get the, the trident in black there. There's his face. 
This is just such a weird character. No alternate face though. Only just one. Could have used a second. Sticking to the aquatic theme, here's Swimming Pool Batman, who comes with a complete dolphin. You can see that dolphin if you want as an actual dolphin or as an inflatable dolphin. So that's entirely up to you. This is the, the most modern, most recent version that they've done. I feel like they've done more, uh, more different dolphins than they need up to this point, Lego has. But it is what it is. Uh, awkward to point out, but I do feel like the swim trunks are done well with a little bit of gold pinstripe along the edges and also the small bat logo done in gold there as well. And, you know, he's got his little flotation device here as well. Maybe he can save some folks from the pool or pretend to save them. Use that as kind of a just a, a charade to get people out so he can have more of it to himself. And this one also has just this single face. This one is Tropical Joker, and there's a lot to look at here. Wow, they really loaded this one up with prints and accessories and things. I mean, look at this. He's got the dual molded arms, dual molded legs, print on the side of the arm there. The print on the back is a little bit messed up. I feel like this just got uh, kind of beaten up before it got to me. You can see a little bit of his alternate face, unfortunately, coming through beneath the hair. That's nothing new. He's got print for kind of uh, uh, you know flip-flops that he's supposed to have on. They don't show too much of it, but just from the front. He's got his icicle there. He's got the camera with a lens piece. He's got his specialized rubber ducky flotation ring with its own multiple prints, multiple colors there. And then he's got his exclusive tropical shirt print for the torso. This is just as beaten up on the front as it is on the back. At least it looks like just the, the white print that was applied there uh, got uh, scratched up. I don't know what's up with that. I, I don't expect that to be that way for, for everyone's though. And then here's his alternate face. So, you know, this is an exclusive head for this this version of the figure. So, wow, they really put a lot into this one figure. Here's Vacation Robin with what I think is a very nice torso print. I like that. I just like how that, how that turned out. He also has dual molded arms and dual molded legs with the prints, of course. The accessory over here is a boom box, good old tape cassette player. Good print on the back of the torso as well, I think. I feel like that's going to be usable outside of just this theme. And then no alternate face once again, unfortunately, but there's his main face. Just that, that look of awe. It's not an expression that you frequently see in Lego figures. Next is Vacation Batgirl. And I think this is another good looking figure, even though the prints are very simple relative to what Lego is capable of. But I think that just the colors and the shapes and the amount of each color really harmonize well together. There's, I don't know, there's just something that I, I can't quite put my finger on but here once again dual molded arms dual molded legs exclusive print for the surfboard there and pretty decent print on the back of the torso as well put that out of the way so you can see that yeah well done and for faces I'm not so mad that she doesn't get an alternate face here uh, just because of how the suit is supposed to work and you know the, the kind of balaclava that that would come over the head so this kind of makes sense to me and what i'm happy about here what i'm relieved about is the print for the face for the skin tone for the face it's it's plenty thick it's plenty opaque so it really looks like the same tone as the plastic that is showing skin tone you know it's not uh, it's not kind of faded it's not letting the purple come through so i'm, I'm thankful for that and then here's just one more for the vacation sort of sub-theme of this series. It's Vacation Alfred. Uh, I, I would say that if Alfred was a real person and not a made-up character, he would be pretty happy that he's getting so much play in the, the Lego Batman movie merchandise, you know, as, as just the butler. I mean, I know he's important to the history of, of Batman and all, but 
I, I never would have expected to see so many variations of Alfred actually released. Now, to some folks nowadays, it'll it'll look like he's in like a prison suit or something. You know, the black and white stripes tend to evoke thoughts, especially thanks to Lego, of criminals that have been locked up or that have been escaped. But this is actually a very old, formerly very popular kind of kind of print on actual swimwear from uh, even be before the times of Batman, really. This is Soccer Mom Batgirl with the exclusive mold for for the hood there. It's a hoodie hood that's up, just has the bat ears in it. I have to wonder if they're ever going to be able to use that exact piece again. Forgive me if I haven't seen some leak of something that's coming up in the future. I don't pay too close attention to to leaks, but uh, yeah, it just seems like a very, very specific design for this. I like that it is not symmetrical. You know, it has a lot of flow to it. I also like the print on her right side, left side of the screen for the legs with just the, the couple of stripes going down there. It has a couple of pieces of bat merch here, bat bucks. And I also like the similar print on this arm, but unfortunately, it's only on that arm. It's not on the other arm. Would have been really useful for some custom figures, I think, if they had done the, the stripes down both. But oh well, it is a short cape piece, not the not the full length. That's kind of funny. And as for the faces, she does get an alternate face, the angry face, tired of it all <laughs> face, and then. Here's the main one, so that's good. Again, considering uh, custom figures and people's desires to make custom scenes, the torso is a female-specific torso, but I feel like it's it's generic enough that you could get a bunch of these and, and put male heads on them, and it wouldn't look too awkward unless you look really, really closely. Okay, wow. This is a good killer moth. Dare I say it's a killer? Killer Moth, classic one. This is basically kind of the, the made serious version of what they did for the Mighty Micros line. So it's a serious version of this, you know, classic comic, uh, I, think, I think original version Killer Moth, if I'm not mistaken. But it's just a striking looking figure for that character. It just looks very, very appropriate to me. Gosh, the, the, the face, especially the head. It's printed really well, too. You know, again, with the opacity, the thickness of, of the print on, the, on the, the skin tone area that's showing. It actually looks like the light flesh color. There's a little bit of, of mess up in just the print on the torso there, but it's not too bad. And then it does have the translucent neon reddish-orange or orangish-red colored wings. They're kind of frosty. This is a... It's actually the exact same headpiece that was used for the Mighty Micros. It's a, a rubber piece. There's some pretty decent print on the back of the torso as well. And with everything removed, you can more clearly see the full print for the face. I figured I should show the Wonder Twins together for obvious reasons. You can see the similarities and differences. Each of these has dual molded arms and dual molded legs. They have the exact same cloth piece used for the, the large collar. Gina on the left comes to the party with a record, so there's just a generic record that's by itself, and she also has the sheath for that, revealing the top 24 party songs. And Zan also gets a uh, an accessory of sorts. It's, uh, it's a second version of him. We'll get to that in just a second. Make sure you saw the backs of these torsos, which have different levels of detail, different different line thicknesses used there. I uh, also want to take these hair pieces off so you can see the faces just plain and clear. Yeah, nothing else really to see there. Notice that the bucket handle for Zan is dark gray. And like I said, it's, it's a, a second version of him form of lame bucket of water lego is a savage for doing a brand new print just for that apache chief 
<laughs> yes! Inic Chalk for the win! What? Oh, and it's a good figure too. It's well done. Ah, oh, this is fantastic. I love the fact that this exists, but now I need a big fig version of him too. In the worst way. Oh, come on, Lego. You gotta do it. You gotta make a large version of him somehow. Or a, a giant figure version would probably be more uh, more appropriate. Yeah, you know, so you could preserve the, the minifig style uh, proportions and everything. But yeah, the printing is really good on this all around. Um, he has the single exclusive printed 1x3 tile piece. Just showing some photographs from the, from the booth at the Justice League anniversary party where he was invited. And again, Batman was not. I'm just, I'm just so happy that this was actually made. <laughs> this is fantastic. Classic. Pretty good print on the back of the torso as well. Yeah, that's good. And uh, there's his face. You know, I mean, it's it's kind of a plain face, but it's kind of right. In fact, I think it's it's very right. Yeah, I think this this whole thing is very right. There we go. That's 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 what I'm gonna leave it on. Jor L. Who would have expected to get a good Jor-El figure out of the Lego Batman movie? I mean, it took until Series 2 minifigs for it to happen, but it happened. And I'm very thankful for that. Uh, something, something that I very rarely do. Uh, I'm actually going to recommend that you buy one of these. Even if you have no interest in the Lego Batman movie, you have no interest in... DC comic stuff in general, uh, I, I do recommend just picking up one of these. Just spend the, the four bucks or whatever it is to get one of these. You know, d get one pre sorted off eBay or something, or if you have time to feel through some packages, pick one up and then just hold on to it. Put it in a plastic bag and store it away in a nice, dry, cool place. Just hold on to it. Maybe throw a silica packet in with it or something. I have a feeling that this is going to become valuable in the future. You know, once these are long discontinued and all, there are a lot of Superman fans that I think will really appreciate this version of Jor-El. I mean, he has the exclusive white colored uh, Superman hairpiece with the curl and that print going down the torso into the, the leg piece there. I mean, it's just a, a slope piece for the leg, but still, I think it looks really good for the the Kryptonian robe. The face looks good to me. Plain from the back. No alternate face, but I do st I do still very genuinely believe this will become a, a very collectible figure in the future. General Zod. <laughs> okay, so we have a little bit of history here. First things first, though, that, uh, that chest print ain't right. The... The skin tone is practically pink. It, it's it's way off. It's it's not it's not working. Uh, so that's that's unfortunate. But this, as far as I can see, is the cinematic universe original cinematic universe version of General Zod from Superman Superman Two. And I saw Superman Two in the theater in its original theatrical release. I was I was rather young at the time. Yeah, do do read what the uh, what the newspaper there says. It's pretty funny. I was rather young at the time and I left that theater genuinely scared of this guy and his cronies. Like I realized that, you know, Superman was victorious, of course, but I thought in my my little childish brain, I thought what if, what if something like this happened? What if somebody like Zod actually came to Earth? What would we do? Superman isn't real, but what if this guy was real? These, these are the thoughts that were going through my very young, very small brain at the time. I was really scared of this guy. So yeah, this guy and I go back, way back, and back into time. And I do wish that the... The highlights in the eyes there didn't look quite so much like pupils looking up and to his right, you know, to our left. Because it takes a little bit of the seriousness away from it. 
I think. I wish they had left that left that alone or made that a little bit more subtle for the highlights. But still interesting figure, really funny new exclusive printed newspaper piece. I like to collect those. Good figure to get. Shame about the sunburned chest though. From a character I genuinely feared as a child to a character I never knew even existed, never heard of before. This is Dr. Phosphorus. And it is a, a figure that really stands out amongst pretty much all Lego figures. It's all done, except for the hips, it's all done in the, uh, the spring, the bright spring green color, which almost phosphoresces. It, it, it almost looks lighter than its surroundings. It's really, really bright. And those flame pieces, I don't know if those flame pieces have been made in the trans neon greenish yellow before. I don't think I have any. Maybe I'm mistaken on that, just forgetting. But, you know, they, they just got the, the Lego uh, skeleton kind of look printed into this. And I think it's done fine. I mean, you know, you look at the legs, you look at them from the front. Okay, that makes sense. And you look at it here and wait, how am I seeing the front and the side separately? It's just, you know, what they had to do. I guess they could have done this figure instead in just trans neon, uh, you know, greenish yellow. But I feel like this... This is almost brighter, you know, that color, once you start stacking up a lot of this, uh, I think might not work so well, especially seeing, being able to see through the body just might not have been as, as good of a look and may have been kind of darker, to be honest. So I think for what it is, this is pretty well done. Very striking. This is Black Canary. And from the expression on her face, I would say she is not amused. I'd say that's probably because she's having to hold this microphone stand out straight in front of her, which is probably not very comfortable. Uh, I just had to put it on screen so you could see what that build is. Let me just uh, let me just take that away for now. Okay, now that's a that's actually a pretty good looking figure. I think the print on the legs is done well. Transitions from the front to the sides very well. The torso print is good. They got some some small fine black lines in there, which you don't see from every angle necessarily, depending upon how the the light hits it. But in person, you can notice it. It just adds a little bit, uh, a little bit of, of depth. And the skin tone here is again a little bit pinkish, but it's not too bad. It's not Zod bad. And the back of the torso looks pretty good. Best thing about her is her alternate face, though. Yeah, yes, that is a belting out face if ever I have seen one. And with the hair on, yeah, that's that's great. That's that's great. Yeah, that's 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 a useful one to have, even if you're not a fan of Black Canary, have no interest in having a Black Canary figure. The figure looks like just a woman. You know, this could easily be put into any kind of of uh, regular setting maybe just change out the legs but then it has these really useful faces i think at the very least those make this a good figure to get last but not least here is black vulcan a very well done figure well executed with one exception i'll get to in just a second he does have dual molded legs which is absolutely essential i think to, to get good coverage for the colors for those legs. I think the legs are printed very well. I think the torso is printed very well. This is a new color, I believe, for the electrical bolt pieces there. Uh, it's a trans, it's, it's translucent. It's similar to trans neon greenish yellow, but it's not quite as greenish. Like if you compare this, for example, to the flame pieces for Mr. Phosphorus over here, Dr. Phosphorus. Well, it doesn't really show up as well on camera here, but this here for Phosphorus is greener. And yet the ones for Black Vulcan are not fully yellow. So it's kind of in between, it's, it's awkward. They've done a couple colors that are, that are different and a little bit off, off palette, I think. The one thing that I don't like here is the paint application work done for the, the what do you call those the horns kind of winglets coming off the the sides of the mask especially on this side you see it just didn't spray all that well now what goes across the top of it is really good for 
yellow on black. I mean, it probably let me get that to focus a little bit better. It probably looks a little bit better in person than it does here on camera when you're looking at it so closely like this. But I think that in person, the the just the contrast and how crisp that looks, it works out pretty well. But just for these side bits, it's a little bit more obvious and probably more obvious from the top as well. Otherwise, a uh, pretty well done figure. And here's his face. A little bit more, a little bit more gentle of an expression than I expected. He really looks very, very calm, and there's no alternate face. So there you go. That's my look at the second and probably final series of Lego Batman movie figures, unless they come out with another one in the future. We shall see. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope that I showed you everything you wanted to see with each of these figures, and I'll talk to you again soon because I've got a lot more videos to do.